Welcome to Nursat Satellite Channel and Telemir TV. We begin with the headlines. His Majesty the King warns against violations of the holy sites in Jerusalem. The Supreme Committee of Churches calls for an end to the genocide in northern Gaza. Jordan holds the occupation responsible for the safety of medical teams and the protection of civilians in Gaza. One million children around the world pray the rosary for peace. In the headlines to the details. His Majesty King Abdullah II has warned against the hostile actions carried out by extremist settlers against Palestinians in the West Bank and the violations of the holy sites in Jerusalem. His Majesty emphasized the urgent need for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza, the protection of civilians, and the continued delivery of humanitarian aid to the region. He stressed the importance of intensifying efforts to de-escalate the situation to prevent the conflict from expanding further in the area. His Majesty reaffirmed Jordan's ongoing historical and religious role in protecting and safeguarding the Islamic and Christian holy sites in Jerusalem under the Hashemite custodianship. The king also reiterated the importance of creating a political horizon to achieve a just and comprehensive peace based on a two-state solution, ensuring that the Palestinian people attain all their legitimate rights. The Higher Presidential Committee for Church Affairs in Palestine, represented by its head, Dr. Ramzi Khouri, called on church leaders and representatives worldwide to pressure their governments regarding Israel's actions in northern Gaza. These actions, described as a war of genocide and forced displacement of Gaza's residents, must be stopped and the perpetrators and aggressors held accountable. The committee explained that Palestinians, especially in northern Gaza, are living in a hell created by the Israeli occupation. The committee stated that Gaza has become a graveyard not only for the Palestinian people, but also for international law and human rights conventions, due to the international community's failure to stop this genocide and brutal aggression. Regarding the situation of Christians in Gaza, the committee pointed to the bombing of the St. Porphyrius Orthodox Church and the targeting of the Holy Family Latin Church, which resulted in hundreds of injured Christians. In addition, the Arab Baptist Hospital affiliated with the Episcopal Angelical Church and the Holy Family Schools were also targeted. The Orthodox Cultural Center was completely destroyed, and the Rosary Sisters School and the YMCA, Young Men's Christian Association, suffered partial damage to some of their facilities. On another note, Jordan has firmly rejected the Israeli occupation forces targeting of three hospitals in Gaza and strongly condemned the brutal Israeli attacks on the Indonesian hospital, Al Adwa Hospital, and Al Shifa Medical Complex. The targeting of civilian facilities providing essential services to Palestinians was also denounced. Jordan holds Israel fully responsible for the safety of civilians and the medical teams working at the Jordanian Field Hospital in Gaza. In a statement issued by the Jordanian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the ministry emphasized the urgent need for international community to fulfill its legal and moral responsibilities. It called for an immediate end to the Israeli aggression against Gaza and for the necessary protection to be provided to civilians at humanitarian and medical facilities in the region. His Excellency Metropolitan Christophorus presided over the Divine Liturgy at the Church of Saints Constantine and Helen in Merj al Hammam, during which he ordained Brother Nidal Sam'an as a deacon of the Gospel. After receiving the blessing, His Excellency addressed the deacon, saying, Your wish has been fulfilled to serve in the Church of Christ by the grace of the Holy Spirit, granting you humility and patience with love crucified by the injustice of others. Be strong, my son, and cast off your old self and put on your new self through the grace of the priesthood, to serve as a deacon and on Sunday as a priest, to serve the Church of Christ. At the end of the service, His Excellency entrusted Archimandrite Athanasius Khaqish with his pastoral duties at the Church of St. Constantine and Helen in Maj al Hammam, in collaboration with economist Alexios and the church committees. He was assisted in the service by several priests and deacons, with the congregation and the family of the new deacon, who had come from Bejala in attendance. The mayor of Greater Amman, Dr. Yusuf Shawarbe, met in his office with the Apostolic Nuncio to the Kingdom, His Excellency Monsignor Giovanni Pietro del Tasso, the representative of His Holiness the Pope. The two parties discussed bilateral relations between Amman and the Vatican and the mechanisms of cooperation and joint work. Ambassador del Tasso praised the level of development that the city of Amman has reached in various fields, expressing the Vatican's readiness to enhance cooperation and joint work between the two friendly countries. The Jordanian government emphasized the need to facilitate procedures for those coming from abroad for treatment and recovery, as well as to collaborate with Jordanian embassies to support the efforts of the private medical sector, which possesses extensive capabilities and skilled human resources. 
This came during a meeting between Prime Minister Dr. Jafar Hassan and a number of reverend ministers and officials. In the meeting, the Prime Minister affirmed the government's commitment to cooperate with the private sector and all entities involved in medical tourism, leveraging Jordan's distinguished global medical reputation. The meeting also discussed the necessary steps to activate the health sector and improve procedures to facilitate the arrival of patients and those seeking treatments to the kingdom. Additionally, they explored ways to enhance cooperation between the government and the private sector to highlight the advantages of the sector and promote it in new countries. The Arab Women's Parliamentary Document was launched in Amman under the patronage of the Minister of Social Development, Wafa Bani Mustafa, during a conference attended by the President of the Arab Parliament, Adel al Asumi, along with several ministries, MPs and Arab officials. In her speech, Bani Mustafa explained that involving women in political and economic life and enhancing their social role contributes to solving many social problems. She emphasized the importance of having women in decision-making positions where their issues, as well as those of their communities and children, become top priority. al Asumi, for his part, expressed his pride in launching the Conference for Jordan, which he described as a model of empowering women. He affirmed that the Arab Parliament places great importance on Arab women's issues. It is worth noting that the Arab Women's Parliamentary Document focuses on empowering female parliamentarians and enhancing opportunities for women in parliamentary work, recognizing their essential role as partners in the development process. In response to the call of His Holiness Pope Francis, around 1 million children worldwide prayed the Rosary for Peace, with more than 300 children in Jerusalem also answering the call. They raised their prayers and supplications for a just and comprehensive peace in the city of Gaza and Lebanon as a message of love and solidarity from the heavenly capital to every child suffering in this world. The children prayed specifically for the children of Gaza who have been deprived of their schools and homes and are now displaced on the streets. They also prayed for the children of Lebanon and the West Bank as well as for every child in the world suffering from the horrors of war, destruction, hatred and animosity asking God to end the war and grant them peace. The Jordanian Senadak Initiative, in collaboration with the World Without Orphans organization, organized a workshop in the capital, Amman, aimed at launching the Hope Groups project in both Jordan and Palestine. The workshop included representatives from local and regional associations and institutions. The workshop focused on training participants on how to provide psychological support to those affected by wars and conflicts, emphasizing the importance of protecting children from all forms of violence and supporting communities impacted by crisis. This project represents a significant step towards improving the lives of affected families in Jordan and Palestine, enhancing their stability and ensuring protection for their children for long-term psychological impacts. The International Scientific Conference organized by the Jordanian Association for Educational Sciences in collaboration with Yarmouk University concluded in Istanbul last Wednesday, titled Visions and Ideas on Issues in Arab Education. The conference aimed to address the challenges facing educational systems in the Arab world World. The conference featured a select group of researchers, academics, and educators from Jordan and several Arab countries, including Father Dr. Ibrahim Nafa, the spiritual advisor to the Marimite Brotherhood in Jordan. It provided a platform for exchange experiences among participants, encouraging creativity and excellence in the educational process. The development educators' skills to align with the digital age and artificial intelligence. Chaired by Dr. Ratib Saud, the conference discussed various topics including educational leadership, curricula, teaching and learning methods, and several working papers. In an effort to enhance relief and humanitarian assistance efforts, the president of the Catholic Relief Services, Mr. Sean Callahan, visited Caritas Jordan accompanied by a high-level delegation, including Regional Director Mr. Hani Mahdi, Office Representative Mr. Jason Knapp from the Jerusalem Office, Operations Director Mr. Elias Qaitam and Program Directors Ms. Cornelius Yeg. This visit was a show of solidarity and blessing coinciding with the opening of the agency's office in Jordan. The visit began at Caritas headquarters where they were welcomed by General Director Mr. Wael Sleiman, the management team and several staff members. During the meeting, Mr. Callahan received a detailed presentation about Caritas Jordan's current projects and initiatives with a focus on the humanitarian response to the situation in Gaza.
The visit also including a ceremony to inaugurate the Catholic Relief Services Office in Jordan attended by the Papal Ambassador to Jordan, His Excellency Archbishop Giovanni Pietro del Tasso. The importance of the opening of the office was emphasized as a strategic step to support Caritas's mission and vision in aiding those in need and promoting sustainable development, marked by the signing of a partnership agreement between Caritas Jordan and Catholic Relief Services. Following this, Mr. Callahan, along with the Papal Ambassador and Mr. Wael Sleiman held a meeting with His Royal Highness Prince Rashid bin Hassan, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Jordanian Hashmai Charity Organization. They discussed the role of the Catholic Relief Services and the importance of partnership and continued communication with the Hashmai Charity Organization, especially regarding efforts to deliver aid to Gaza. The visit concluded with a tour of one of the Catholic Relief Services warehouses where the operations of sorting and sending humanitarian aid were showcased reflecting the agency's deep commitment to relief work and addressing the needs of affected communities. Cardinal Louis Raphael Sacco addressed Eastern Catholic Christians, urging them to recognize that within the Church, as part of the Body of Christ, they are committed to its laws and teachings. He emphasized that believers, both men and women, should live the teachings of the Master in their daily lives and witness to Him through their behavior by listening to the calls of the loving God, the Father. He called for embodying Christ's calls to promote universal brotherhood, unconditional love, solidarity, and working towards creating an environment where everyone can live in freedom, dignity, peace, and stability. In his message, he stated that every believer, whether clerical, consecrated, or lay, should understand the meaning of Christ's message with clarity and act with both mind and heart. The Cardinal also highlighted the importance of bishops maintaining good relationships with their superiors, fellow bishops, priests, and the faithful entrusted to their service. He concluded by stressing the significance of proper Christian formation in seminary institutions, convents of nuns and monks within the families during the engagement preparations period, as well as in educational institutions and training courses for religious education teachers. The Cathedral of the Archdiocese of Qatar in Doha, belonging to the Jerusalem Patriarchate, celebrated the feast of Saint Isaac the Syrian. His Grace, Archbishop Makarios of Qatar, presided over the service of the Great Vespers with the consecration of the bread, accompanied by hymns in Arabic, Greek, and Slavic, attended by clergy and members of the parish. The following day, he led the Divine Liturgy with the presence of the ambassadors from Greece, Russia, Cyprus, the Chargé d'Affaires of Georgia, and the ambassadors of Serbia, and the gathering of believers. After the Divine Liturgy, a procession with the icon of Saint Isaac the Syrian took place, followed by a reception in the Gathering Hall. Dear viewers, we have reached the end of our broadcast. Before we conclude, here's a recap of the highlights covered herein. His Majesty the King warns against violations of the holy sites in Jerusalem. The Supreme Committee of Churches calls for an end to the genocide in northern Gaza. Jordan holds the occupation responsible for the safety of medical teams and the protection of civilians in Gaza. For more details, please visit our website, noursadjo.org. Thank you for watching, wishing you a pleasant day, and until we meet again.